Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, John Maloney, and in this episode, I have brought on regular Faithy, and as for our guest, he's from Florida, and he has broken a world record for world's fastest reader, and he teaches people how to accelerate their learning. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Howard Berg. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, how's life? Um, well, if you're watching the news, it's kind of uh, kind of like watching a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, oh, but it happens. Than, my life's fine. It's the rest of the world that's really it's starting to fall apart. You're about to fall apart, so I'm yeah. hoping for the best. But you know, we're relying on a sociopath it's... to be rational. That's not the best reassurance that we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's only going to get worse from here. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been up to recently? Oh, uh, well, let me think. I, I'm making a new program. I just made a uh, 13 hour program. I, I work a lot with students and Many students today don't finish college, about 50% drop out in four year, 70% in two year. Tuition in private colleges could be like 60,000 a year. And most students that finish, the majority take six years to do four. So I'm tutoring students on how to finish college early in three to four years. So it saves their parents between a one hundred and twenty, one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. Because so I have kids as young as eleven in colleges around the world getting A's, and sometimes in as little as a week, uh, using the strategies that we're going to go over today. So that's kind of what you asked me what I'm doing. That's been my big project right now. I'm also working with a gentleman in England to train people throughout Europe on how to teach this. So those are my two big projects. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, what what got you into achieving this record of yours? Well, two parts. When I grew up, I grew up in Brooklyn in a bad part. I was in the projects. It was like West Side Story without the music and dancing. Uh, I met Bernardo. He had a knife and he wasn't dancing. He wasn't smiling. I, I found the safest place in my neighborhood was the library. Gang kids would rather be dead than caught in the library. And the worst thing in the library was a paper cut, which was a lot better than what was happening outside the library. So I read a lot and had college reading when I was 11. I went to the State University of New York, Binghamton, when I was 17 to major in biology. And then my second half of my junior year, got interested in the brain and learning. So I told the dean I want to major in bio and psych. And he looked at me and said, you only have one year left. You haven't had any psych courses. I have to do the four-year program in one year and finish the bio program by taking six science courses at the same time. And you'd also have to uh, take two four-hour labs, and each lab report took 16 hours on a slide roll. And I had three jobs. I was working 18 hours a week. So he said, you're not smart enough. And that's when I realized they never taught me learning in school. They tell you what to learn and why to learn, what happens when you don't learn. But not when you hear a song once on the radio, you never forget it. And you read the seven habits of highly effective people the next day and it only habits. They said, there's got to be a way to learn things that matter. Like you learn the songs. I got up to 80 pages a minute. I did the psych program in one year. I took the graduate record exam, which is like an SAT for graduate school in biology. And I read 48 books in three nights, like biochemistry, genetics, cell physiology. I got three questions wrong. I got an 800. So I was in the 99th percentile in the world. And then I wondered if it was what I was doing or me. Because there's a difference between you're strange and you can do these things or you can teach it. So I took kids 11 to 15 and taught them what I was doing and did a 30-chapter book and lifelong developmental psych, a sophomore course in a week. And they took the AP test, the CLEP, and 18 students took the test, 15 passed the course for full college credit in one week. So it said, okay, not only could I do it, 
but I could teach other people how it's done. And that's much more important to me than me doing it. So that's kind of my story. I've hmm. joined a bit ago. I just didn't want to interrupt anyone. That's, that's fine. fine. I'm married. I know real pain. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good wife. I'll be, I, I tell you, my first marriage was a storybook marriage. Unfortunately, Stephen King wrote the book. But I have a good one now. She's very nice. So, <laughs> I'm, so I'm happy now. Oh, uh, yes. So what, what is it exactly that you teach in Accelerating Learning? Oh, I can actually do some of it with you today. I can show people, one, how to read quicker, how to understand better, how to remember, and then we can go from there if you'd like. So I don't just tell them what I do. I can show them how it's done if you think that would be helpful sure, to the ahead. audience. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'll start off with how to read faster. After the show, pick a book you've read. So the only thing that could confuse you is how fast you're reading, not what you're reading. So if you pick a book on quantum physics or existentialist philosophy, there's probably a reason you're confused because everyone is. Pick a book you actually understand and read for a minute normal with a timer. Nothing special. See how far you go. Then go to the first chapter, first page. See how far you go. Put a little mark with a pencil or a pen when you finish, you say, okay, that's how far I can read now. Now go to the second chapter. Take your hand and go from the left to the right margin, one line at a time with your eye following your hand. And this is the secret, as fast as you could comprehend. So as long as you know what you're reading, go quicker and quicker and quicker till you don't. And then when it got too fast, slow down just enough so the comprehension comes back. And for five minutes, go as fast as you can understand, not faster and not slower, using your hand to move your eye across one line at a time. <clears throat> now go back to the first chapter where you tested yourself for a minute and time yourself again for a minute, but this time using your hand going as fast as you could comprehend. And you're going to go 20 to 40% further past the little mark that you did during the first time just doing that one change. That's what we do at Berg Learning. We teach people how to read faster. If you'd like, I could go on to comprehension as well. Wow. Great. I got a question for you. Sure. <clears throat> what do you do? What do you do if you have absolutely no focus, even when you love the story and where all of a sudden you just can't focus? It's like, shoot, I just read that. And all of a sudden I had to read it again. I can't focus one bit. That's a great question. Um, I teach EQ skills, emotional intelligence skills. And part of what I teach is how to focus, how to stay um, in the moment. And one of the things that helps is using the hand because your hand is keeping the eye focused where it's moving. So that makes a big difference. And another thing that helps, when most people read, it sounds like someone is talking in their head aloud one word at a time. But when you're in a car, you're going, well, you're in England, so it's probably uh, kilometers, but say between 120, 140 kilometers, which would be about 70 miles per hour, roughly, give or take. Uh, you read the road, you read front, back, left and right. You read your GPS, you're watching your gauges, you're talking to your friends, you're on the phone, you're listening to the radio maybe all at the same time and you're bored. But when you're in a book, you're reading 200 words a minute right in front of you. What's the difference? When the car, everything's like a movie and it's very uh, visual, you're taking in all the information like pictures. When you're in a book, you're listening to the words one at a time. So what I'm teaching you to do is move to a different part of your brain that's more visual and less auditory and that helps you to stay more focused. It's more engaging. Like when you're driving, you stay focused and it's less boring. It's much quicker and it's more interesting. And you actually end up remembering more doing it that way when you use all of the tools that I'm going to talk about today. But did that help answer your question a little? Yeah, it's, it did. I could, I could see where the hand works. But like, so that's only part of it. That's part of it. There's more. I'm giving you, I'm, I only have a little time. I can't do a four hour program in 10 minutes, but I'm trying to I give you. <laughs> 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 I try, but 
uh, I, why don't I move on and show you how to comprehend? Because that might make it more, uh, it's actually part of the answer to your question as well. I'm much more interested in understanding than speed. I don't think anyone really wants to read fast. Learn fast. That's interesting. Read fast. If you don't remember anything, what's the point? Uh, I was on a show about 20, 25 years ago when MSNBC first launched. Dick Cavett was one of their hosts. He was a famous talk show host. And we got to be friends and we were chatting after the interview. And he said he had interviewed Woody Allen. And Woody told him he took Evelyn Woods, which was a big speed reading program in the 60s and 70s. And he read War and Peace, which is an enormous book in five minutes. And he said, Woody, that's amazing. What do you remember? And Woody said, it's about the Russian Revolution. That's all I remember. And that was speed reading. It's a biology book. It's a book about math. You didn't learn any math. You didn't learn any biology. It was too hard to learn at that speed. And if you slow down to learn, you lost your speed. I fixed it. I'm going to show you how in a minute. The man who owned Evelyn Woods in its heyday was Maurice Thompson Jr. He had me teach his son my system and said, you went past speed reading to speed learning. And I'm going to show you one of the things I did now. Uh, I took graduate courses in how to teach people to read, how the brain reads. And one of the key elements is called schema. I'm going to show you exactly how it works, how it creates comprehension, and also keeps you from getting bored. So first I'm going to read a passage without any schema, and watch how confusing it is. This is an easy thing to do. If possible, you could do it at home, but you could always go someplace else if it's necessary. Beware of overdoing it. This is a major mistake and may cost you quite a bit of money. And you have no idea what I'm talking about because there's no schema. I'm going to read it again, this time with a title, only one word, a one word title, and instantly everything will make sense. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Here's the title. Laundry. Laundry. This is an easy thing to do. If possible, you could do it at home, but you could always go someplace else if it's necessary. Beware of overdoing it. This is a major mistake and it costs you quite a bit of money. You know exactly what I'm telling you now because you have schema. So I'm teaching people where that is, how to find it two, three, four times faster. And it acts like a decoder ring. So even though you're going much quicker because you're using the brain's natural strategy for making text make sense and make it meaningful, you're actually learning better than you did at the slowest speed. It also keeps your brain more engaged because you're more conscious of what you're doing and how you're processing information. And that keeps you more interested in what's going on and also gives you strategies for making sense out of material that might be challenging or confusing in the past. So that that's one of the things that helps to answer your other question as well. So by combining hand motions with psychology, how the brain learns and not just speed, we're able to get a completely different outcome than it's a math book or it's a book about science because the brain is actually learning the math and is learning the science. Did, did that help a little? Yeah. Perfect. That's why we're here. If you'd like, I could go another step and show you how to remember. Yeah. I would, I would yeah. love to hear that. Yeah. We would both love to hear that. Perfect. Okay. Because people say, I read 80 pages a minute, and people say, do you remember anything? Yeah, I remember a lot. So can you, when you know how. There's many ways. There's no one way to do it. What you do to learn a language might be different than reading a novel, which might be different than reading a technical book, and different than relaxing with a newspaper. So I give you all the different tools to use when you need them. But right now, I'm going to show you how to learn a list. I'm going to give you 10 things to remember. I won't show you how. And I'm pretty sure you won't be able to. Then I'll show you how. And I'm pretty sure you'll remember all of them backwards and forwards without any effort forever. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Here are the 10 things you want to remember. Pole, shoes, tricycle, car, glove, gun, dice, skate, cat, and bowling pins. I'm going to bet right now if I said give me all 10 backwards, you probably wouldn't be able to do it and get it right. Does that sound fair? 
Yeah. That's okay. fine. Good. Well, now we're going to fix that. Two things. You only remember 10% of what you read, but 90% of what you say and do. What we're about to do is not a drill. It's a tool. You will want to use this. So when I ask you to say and do with me, do that to lock it in because you'll get the full benefit of what we're doing. And that's for our audience as well. Secondly, the ancient Greeks discovered a shortcut for learning a list. Take a list you already know that's hanging in your memory. And what do we do with hangers? We hang things on it. We're going to use the numbers from 1 to 10, which I feel confident you already know and everyone listening already knows, to learn the 10 new things super fast, starting with the number one. The number one looks like a pole, like a lamp pole or a flag pole. So when I say one, you say pole. Ready? One. Pole. pole. Excellent. <laughs> two is shoes because you wear two shoes. Two is shoes. What's two? Two is shoes. What's two? Shoes. What was one? Pole. pole. Excellent. Three is a tricycle. It has three wheels. What's three? Tricycle. What's two? Shoes. What's one? Pole. Getting smarter. <laughs> four is a there car. There we go. There's four tires on a car. Four is a car. What's four? Car. Go to car. two. Jump to two. Shoes. Two. What was oh, one? Yeah. Pole. What pole. was three? Tricycle. Tricycle. We're jumping. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Ready? You're going to keep going. You're getting smart now. Five is a glove. There's five fingers in a glove. So five is a glove. What's five? Glove. glove. What was three? Tricycle. Tricycle. One. Pole. Excellent. Now in Texas, they love guns. Six gun. Six gun. <laughs> What's six? Gun. gun. Good. What was four? We had four tires. Car. Two. 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 Perfect. Lucky seven and dice. You want to throw a seven on the first throw. Lucky I'm seven. This. Dice. What seven? Dice. Dice. Five. Five fingers in a glove. What was three? Tricycle. Tricycle. What was one? Pole. Pole. You're almost done. Rhymes work. Say eight skate. Eight skate. Eight. Skate. What's eight. That's right. Skate. Six. What did they love in Texas? Guns. Gun. Good. Four is a. Car. Car. What was two? Two. Shoes. You're almost done. Two more. Nine is a cat. It has nine lives. Nine lives. Cat. What's nine? Cat. Cat. Seven was lucky in what game? Which Dice. game? Dice. That's right. Five is a? Glove. Glove. Three. Tricycle. Excellent. And what was one? Pole. Pole. The last number is ten. <laughs> How many bowling pins are in a bowling lane? Ten. Ten bowling, bowling pins. What's ten? Bowling, bowling pins. Okay, let's do the list that you couldn't do. What was one? Pole. Pole. What was two? Shoes. Shoes. What was three? Tricycle. Tricycle. What was four? Car. Car. Five. Glove. Glove. Six. Texas. Gu Guns. Guns. Right. Lucky seven and Dice. Dice. eight rhymes with skate. Skate. Good. Nine. Cat. Yeah. It was 10, the last one. Bowling pin. Fantastic. Now here's how to use it. You just learned how to speed memorize numbers. Imagine you're in a hotel and the room on the door is 314. By the time you got to the lobby, you forgot what room you were in. It happens all the time. Here's how to remember the number. Three is a tricycle. One is a pole. Four is a car. Make a movie. A tricycle hits the pole on a car. A tricycle hits the pole on a car. Tricycle, what number? Three. Three, one, it, four. That's right. Tricycle, pole, car. And now the zero, because the zero to nine is all the numbers. The zero is the 10 bowling pins. So now you have a picture for every digit. And when you need to learn a number, string the pictures together in a movie. And when you play the movie in your mind, you'll remember your number. And by the way, 314 is also pi which is what you do to measure a circle in school, 3.14. So I use it with students for math and science and history. In business, it could be due dates, percentages, taxes, room numbers, phone numbers. And now you know how to speed learn numbers. Wow. Oh, that was quite exciting.
Thank you. I'm an exciting guy. <laughs> I can I can certainly Where, tell. Where are you from? I didn't quite catch that because of my audio difficulties. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, but I live in I Florida now. I'm in Florida. What, oh, okay. What dragged you down south with me? Um, I didn't understand your question. I'm sorry. What dragged you down south from Brooklyn? What am I doing here? Um, yeah. Well, I live in I live in Florida because it's warm and it's not frozen like up north. And oh yeah. Lots of sunshine, and I like to swim, so I swim outside every day. Uh, like today, it'll be around 90 degrees. I go swimming. I like to bike. Uh, I like I like exercising and walking my dog. So it's a nice place to live. But I work. I, my wife retired, but I still work. I like what I do. I enjoy helping people, and uh, these shows give me a chance to uh, share some of what I've learned to do. By the way, my website it's Berg Learning, like my name, B E R G Berg Learning dot com. And I believe there's a 40% discount on all the programs. And if people need help, my personal email is howard at berglearning.com. Just send me an email. I'll make sure you learn it. I, I'm, I'm a rotary president. So to me, it's not just about selling a program. It's about helping people get smarter so they can have a more successful life. And the kids can finish school and their parents stay mentally fit as they get older. I'm 72. And if you keep your brain young, you'll be able to do so many more things in your life than if you let it atrophy. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to help people. Great. That's what that's what you're doing is absolutely amazing. I like that. And Thank what you. you did, and what you did with me is, wow. I, I've actually I can actually visualize what you just said about BergLearning.com, forty percent off. It, yeah. Wow, Thank that you. was that was really quite effective. Well, thank you. I, and it's nice. I mean, I, I had an 11 year old who was a C student. When I got done with him, he was an English professor at 22. Another oh, wow. one passed the bar in California at 19. He was an attorney, finished college and law school by the time he was 19. Uh, another one with special education, third grade reading in ninth grade. When I got done with them, they finished two years of college with a 4.0, got a full scholarship to Baylor and then went on for a master's degree. And when they were starting my program, they were reading at the third grade and ninth grade. And that's, that to me is more, more meaningful than being in Guinness. Uh, it means I'm helping people. Me, me doing it, it gets me on shows, but it doesn't help you. You doing it and being able to have your kids do it and your businesses do it and your parents do it, that makes a difference. So to me, that's really the goal is to, give other people the skills. So it's not, if you read the news, does anyone think the biggest problem we have is too many smart people making too many good decisions? No one's complaining about that. There's just too much smartness in the world. So yeah. my goal is to try to get more smart people. Hopefully wow. more smart people will make better decisions than what we got now. And that can that's change good. everything. And that's what I'm doing. That's great. It's going to take some time, but we'll get there. We'll certainly get there. Yes, it's not. It's very easy to learn. I wanted the program to be easy because if it's not, then it's just a new problem. Your, your solution should be easier than the problem you're trying to fix. Yeah, absolutely. So have you done anything else since then? Oh, yeah. I wrote a book in five hours. And uh, then I made a program on how to write a book in five hours. Uh, and then I have another program on how to be a genius, uh, how to be intuitive. That's another thing I do. Um, I'm trying to think. What I, oh, EQ. I trained the U.S. Special Forces at Fort Bragg, and I trained the Royal Thai Army in Bangkok. And I was teaching them emotional intelligence. If you like, I could show you how to do that, too. Okay. Well, emotional intelligence is really important. So a lot of these, they would train very well, but sometimes they're on missions for three or four days and they don't sleep. If they don't remember what they learned, they could get hurt or killed. So I'm going to show you to get energy and wake up instantly. Now we know mm -hmm. the left side of the brain 
controls the right side of the body, and the right side of the brain controls the left. So I want you to do this with me. Take your left hand, touch your right shoulder, and then take your right hand and touch your left shoulder and alternate. Left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Perfect. Now, ideally, you should be standing but we're in front of microphones, so you may not want to stand right now. But what you're going to do is take your left hand, touch your right knee, and your right hand, and touch your left knee, alternating like you did with your shoulders. And when you do stand, your knee moves. So both sides of your brain are doing something. Now grab your thumb in your hand like you're making a fist. Put your thumb in your hand and say, right thumb, and say, I feel great, like you mean it. I feel great. I feel great. I can mean it. I feel great. I feel great. There you go. And then you go, <laughs> yes, because if you don't feel it, it isn't there. We're going to do three sets of these. When you're done, I'm going to show you to wake up instantly when you're going to class at night or in a long meeting or driving in traffic. You start with the shoulder taps. Go at my speed, left to right. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Six knees. One, two, three, four, five, six. How do you feel? I feel great. Feel great. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> perfect. Do it again. This time faster. Shoulders. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Knees. One, two, three, four, five, six. How do you feel? I feel great. Feel great. great. Yes. Yeah. This time as fast as you can go. Fast as you can go. If you're standing up later, move away from the table so you don't bang your knees. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Knees. One, two, three, four, five, six. How do you feel? I feel great. Yes. And yeah. What happens when you do this three times? Nothing. Now you probably would like something. So let me show you that works. Remember Pavlov? He rang a bell. I'm a rotary president. That's our bell. Rang a bell, fed a dog. Rang a bell, fed a dog. Rang a bell, and the dog drooled. You don't want to drool, and you're not a dog. But you do want to feel great. The latest mm -hmm. studies show habits take 90 days, not 30 days. So every day, do slow, medium, fast. I feel great, yes. Now you're in an important meeting. Don't stand up and tap your shoulders. They'll think you're out of your mind. Grab your thumb and say to yourself, I feel great, yes. That's your bell. And your brain remembers every time you did that for three months, you woke yourself up. And it'll make you go into a positive alert state instantly. And by doing that, you can create all kinds of states. State of alertness. Uh, you asked early, how do you stop from getting bored? State of focus, concentration, calmness. Every state you can think of, we can create the state before you need it. And then trigger the state when you need it by creating an anchor like we did with I Feel Great Yes. And the key is you really have to feel it. I was on a TV show called The Joe Franklin Show. It's the longest running show on television in history by one person. There's been longer running shows, but not one person. He was on 50 years straight all by himself. And I was on the show in the last three weeks. And I said, what's your secret? How did you get the longest running show in history? And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, sincerity. And when you can fake that, you can do anything. I want you to know, no one fakes sincerity for 50 years. I don't care how good an actor you are. No one can fake it that long. And so if you don't really feel great, when you trigger it later, you won't feel great either because it wasn't there to begin with. That's why I put so much emphasis on make sure you're actually feeling great and not just saying the words. Any questions? How do you no? deal with burnout anyways? I was just thinking, you know, this guy knows how to feel great. This guy knows how to remember things. You know, that's almost, you know, after today, you know, you taught me a, a little bit how to remember. But I wonder, do you know how to deal with burnout after studying oh, so much, after doing so much? Sure. Good question. When I got out of college, I studied yoga and meditation. And I meditate every day now for 50 years. And so I know how to stay very calm and very focused. It's one of the things I teach in my more advanced program, but that's what I do. When I was on uh, I was on Fox News, I read the healthcare bill, which was 1,500 pages, 
in 50 minutes and did an analysis. So before I was on the air, I meditated for an hour. So I would be very focused and very calm and be able to take care of what I had to do and not get distracted. And it worked. I was able to read the thing. I was able to do an analysis. Everything I predicted happened was 100% accurate. And that's 1,500, that's 1,500 pages in 50 minutes. Not bad, but more importantly, I remembered it and I understood it and I could analyze it. And so there is no one thing you can do for everything, but by giving you different strategies and techniques, you can change what you're doing to fit your needs. If reading a novel isn't going to medical school and reading Grey's Anatomy, if you did what the person reading Grey's Anatomy did, you wouldn't have any fun. And if they did what the person reading the novel did, they'd be killing people. So reading isn't one thing. How much do you need to know? How much do you need to remember? How much time do you have? What do you already know? How familiar are you with the topic? Is it brand new, something you know nothing at all about? Or is it something you know a lot about? Is it something you're interested in? Or something you find very boring? All those things matter when we're learning. So, And everyone's different. Some people learn languages very quickly. Others learn co- uh, musical instruments. Others, others are good at math. Everyone's good at something, but very few people good at everything. And so what you do well is going to be different than something you know nothing about. So by giving you all of the tools, every tool you could use, you find the ones that are best for you in that subject at that time for what you're trying to accomplish in the time you have available. So there isn't a magic trick where everything's always going to be the same because it isn't. Sometimes you need to know a lot. Sometimes you just need to know a little. Sometimes you need to remember it really, really well. And sometimes you just have to know that it's there. And when you need it, you can look it up. So I'm giving you all of those different options so you can do what works best for you in each situation. Great. Again, uh, Berg, that, learning, Berg learning. Yeah, absolutely. And that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you here, Howard, talking about your achievements with the world record for fastest reader, uh, what you're doing, teaching people how to accelerate their learning, and especially that exercise that, you, that I did with you. Oh, man. I have no, I have no words how effective that was. It was really Thank beneficial. You. Everything I do is like that. It's easy and fun. If it isn't fun and it isn't easy, it's just a new problem. I want to take a problem away, not make a new one. I and bet I'm- you could teach me how to wish away my 99 problems in one yes, way. Yes, could. I do that also. I teach I teach speed math. Great. And um, with that being said, until next time, stay tuned for more. <laughs>